Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be using the Spellbinders Gnome Drive Holiday and Gnome Drive Halloween die sets. These are absolutely amazing. I love them and we're going to be using them to make a super fun Halloween scene card with the support of our Gnome Drive sentiments. I love that it has so many Halloween options. Happy Halloween, have a magical day, hello boo, and we're going to be pulling in the let the shenanigans begin and I think that one's fun because depending on who you're giving it to it could apply to any holiday. So the first step is going to be pulling all of the different dies from each set that I'm going to use. So I'm starting out by pulling all of the different car dies, making sure that I have all the pieces that I need and then we're going to be using all of the dies for the gnome except for the hat and the shoes for this one. Um, we're going to use the witch hat from the Halloween set. So once I had all of my dies pulled to the side, I ran it through my die cutting machine and then we will get to our coloring. I decided right away that I was going to ink blend my background and Copic color my die cuts. I really love the combination of this and I like being able to kind of get the finer details from my markers on all of my die cuts and still letting the background be bright and bold with my inks but not feeling super overwhelmed at having to color in a full scene. So I shaded in the gnome's nose with some skin tone colors and then I went in with my warm gray markers and started shading in that beard. Kind of using the little flicks of hair at the bottom as a place to start off from pulling color up from there and then pulling some color down from the top where it's going to, the beard's going to be tucked under his nose and then going in with even lighter markers to shade all of that out. Now I personally prefer to Copic color going from my darkest to my lightest. When I first started out Copic coloring, I would map out my shadows with my lightest color first, or sometimes just go lightest to darkest and then back to lightest. But now as I've gotten more comfortable with my markers, I tend to just reach for my darkest first to lay in those shadows and then work my way up blending out my colors from there. I knew that the um, beard was going to cover most of his body, so I just left the center part open because nobody's ever going to see it. And I shaded in his little outfit, his shirt, and his, the, the band for his witch hat in um, some green very bright green because I knew I was going to have orange and I was we were going to play with some purple later and so green orange and purple are the Halloween triadic color scheme and I just love it when you see those colors you know it's Halloween um, I also colored the little metal belt buckle part on his hat gold with just one single gold color I wasn't going to get crazy there I shaded in little black gloves for his hands. You could definitely do these skin tone. I don't know why, but in my brain it was like, nope, those are gloves. They don't have to be gloves. So just keep that in mind. If you want them to be skin tone, they could be skin tone. Or you can make them gloves, winter gloves, whatever you want. Um, so I'm shading in my witch hat with some dark neutral grays. And I just wanted to throw it out there that the Gnome Drive collection from Spellbinders has way more than just these two die sets. So the main holiday one is the one with the car and the gnome. So that's kind of the base one that you would get no matter what. And then um, you could add on to that with all of these different holidays. There's like a St. Patrick's Day, Easter, the Halloween. There's so many options and I love that with that one base die you can easily swap out different accessories and kind of get so much out of this one set. It's so cute. Uh, but obviously, as a true Halloween fanatic, I had to go with the Halloween one. I know you understand. <laughs> Um, so I added the band and the little buckle to my witch hat. I had to slide down the gnome's nose a little bit and kind of line up my hat where I wanted it to lay so that everything went nice and smooth. Now this is supposed to be 
a pumpkin balloon, but I decided I did not want a pumpkin balloon. I wanted a regular pumpkin and I wanted it to sit in the car with my gnome. So we're going to ignore the pumpkin um, or sorry, the balloon tie at the bottom of this. And I'm going to color this just as if it's an actual pumpkin and not like it's a shiny balloon. So I'm going in with some pretty dramatic oranges and deep browns, really warm, deep browns to start shading in the sections of my pumpkin. And this guy is hefty. So you have a lot of room to add in extra texture if you want. Um, I added in, you can see some of those stripes and lines that are going through the center of each of those kind of lobes of the pumpkin. That's just going to bump up that texture and really, again, give that feel that this is not a smooth, shiny balloon. So that you can do it either way. If you love the um, balloon effect with it floating above the car, go for it. But that's just not the, not what I was going for. Um, I did add some of my Spellbinders tape to the back of this and then later we'll do the same thing with our ghost so that I can insert the nose, eyes, and mouth, um, which I just colored with the 100 black Copic marker. Um, so once I got those kind of inserted into their spot, the uh, tape from the back just kind of helps hold those die cuts in place and then we'll glue the whole piece on at the end as if it's just one solid die cut. Um, I did add a little bit of shading to the eyes making the darker areas at the bottom and then leaving it just a tiny bit lighter at the top and I love adding white highlight to the eyes of my pumpkin and my ghost and I also added little highlights here and there um, to the witch hat and the pumpkin, not so much because I wanted them to look shiny, but more because I thought it added to this kind of cartoon feeling that I was getting from them. I really just wanted to enhance that really cutesy animated look. For my ghost, I colored its eyes in solid and I'm going in with the lightest W warm gray markers and a little bit of colorless blender to shade in my ghost and I inserted their eyes as well. I just love this little trio of characters. I think they're so cute. There's also a cat in this set, but I, because I wanted my pumpkin sitting in the car, I knew there just wasn't going to be room for the cat. So I also love that you can choose to use one of the accessories, two of the accessories, all of the accessories, whatever makes you happy. This is such an easily customizable die set. For the car itself, this is where I brought in my purple elements. I'm going in with some V markers, adding shadows to the parts of the car that would be kind of indented the most in, and then working through my medium and light purples to blend that out. Um, a lot of this is going to get layered with more color on top or more dye layers on top. And again, I love that you could customize this car for whatever holiday you are creating for or even for your recipient. If your like recipient is a car person or is known for their car or color car, you could absolutely kind of color this to fit them or their personality. Uh, I think that would be absolutely adorable. I shaded in the bottom tire area and then this part I did wrong, but I wanted to leave it in so that you could see my mistake. If you use these, you're going to want to add that gray piece that I have now. That goes first. And then your tire, like line, black one, go on top. That's how they like to sit. I don't know that it's like a hard rule, but I can tell you from experience that it doesn't look right. It doesn't fit right if you do it the other way around. So I would suggest putting the longer uh, gray like thicker gray piece on first and then adding the tires and that bottom thinner die on top. Um, this is the little section that's going to go um, above that. I guess it's the grill. I really should have looked up some car terminology before I started this <laughs> but we're going to be we're going to go with grill. I'm shading in the pieces of the grill, the little lines that go on top of that, and then the steering wheel. Um, I'm keeping all of those really neutral uh, with those neutral grays, and um, I think I didn't even bring out the 100 again. I'm pretty sure I just left 
um, everything in the neutral grays, losing a lot of that N8 today instead of like a true black. Um, the tiniest bit of glue is all that you need for these little lines that go across the grill. Man, I hope it really is grill. Um, and then also the side mirrors have additional dyes. I did not use those. Uh, well, I used it, but I'll show you in a second how I used it. I cut them out, not realizing that the car already had them attached. So I just used the ones on the car. But you could definitely layer it up for even more dimension. We're going to use our other one in a very interesting way here in a second. But first, I'm going to adhere the back part of the lights um, and then the actual lights themselves, which I'm coloring in now with that soft orange kind of golden color. And then you can see where the highlight is cut out. You could insert white cardstock into that highlight, but I'm going to go in with my white gel pen again and just fill that in. And it filled in perfectly. You would never know that there was purple under there. Added more highlights to the metallic silvery parts of the car. Again, just trying to bump up that animated feel. And now we're going to work on our background. We'll come back to that, that extra mirror piece here in a minute. Inking up my background, I went in with the Lawn Fawn Nighttime Sky Stencil. I love this stencil. It's so beautiful. Um, and you get the both sides of the moon for this. So you get the inside and the outside mask for the moon. So I have a little bit of tape on the moon mask now, holding that in place. And I'm going in, I started out with Salvage Patina Distress Ink. Then I, to just create kind of that halo glow around the moon. And now I'm going in with my Uncharted Mariner Distress Ink, kind of bumping up that color. And then to take it from a regular night sky to a Halloween night sky, I'm going in with some Villainous Potion right on those edges, kind of just playing up that fun color. And I think with everything else goes into the scene that this purple really helps to tie in with the car and again just play up that spookier um, sky. So I just took a piece of printer paper and used it to mask off the top section of my card and I'm just creating my own road here with some black soot and I also added some black soot all around my edges and I'm gonna kind of create a little bit of like a vignette feeling uh, around the bottom of that road. So it's like a little smoky, a little foggy maybe. And I grabbed the new Unraveled uh, Distress Mica Spray. This stuff is amazing. It doesn't look like much until you tilt it in the light and then you see all of that shimmer. And it's not quite gold and it's not quite silver. It's this like perfect champagne color. It's absolutely stunning. Um, I originally I had Lost Shadow pulled out, but I ended up it wasn't enough color. So I grabbed the old paper Distress Oxide. I decided an oxide would be nice for the moon because the oxides have that little bit of a chalky finish to them, different than the regular inks. So I used the crater part of my Lawn Fawn stencil to add some texture to my moon with that old paper ink and got that on a... Um, my card base. Got it onto my A2 size card base. Now I'm taking that rear view mirror and I colored it green and we're going to add it upside down to the top of my pumpkin and that's going to be my stem. So you know what? You just use what you have and you make it work. And I love how this turned out. I think it just helped it really look like a big old pumpkin instead of just this orange ball sitting in the car. Um, to the top of my moon, I decided to go in with Distress Oxide and Villainous Potion. I swapped from the ink to the oxide for this because in my experience, inks do, with the regular dye inks do not stamp well on top of oxide inks. So to make sure that this looked nice and smooth all the way across, I went with oxide on top of oxide. If I had been stamping on the sky section, the ink probably would have been fine. Um, but so I just want to explain why I had to, why I felt the need to use both Villainous Potion, regular dye ink and oxide ink. Um, you use what you have or play around. Uh, I just, in my experience, I get way better stamping if I use oxides on top of oxides. 
I'm going in now with my Lawn Fawn liquid glue to um, set everything into place. I'm kind of just leaving them there on the card as placeholders so that I can see how everything is lining up. And my ghost, my gnome, and my pumpkin are all going to be adhered down flat with this liquid glue. And my car is going to get popped up with the 3D foam squares that I absolutely love. They give the perfect amount of dimension. They're absolutely perfect. Um, but first we got to get our pumpkin into place. And I just love how he fits right under that sentiment, just kind of tucked. He's like half hanging out of the car. His life is slightly in danger, um, but it's Halloween and it's supposed to be a little bit scary. <laughs> so they're just out for their nighttime drive. Um, I realized that there was a little bit of a gap between these two when the car was in place. So I just fill, literally colored in and filled in that gap with a little bit of black marker. Now I have those 3D, those thin 3D foam squares and I'm adding them to my car. We're going to pop that on. This panel is trimmed down just a tiny bit at four by five and a quarter so that that black backer panel shows through and you get that really nice thin mat. I love that on my Halloween cards too. I think that extra little touch of black and depth to the card really bring everything together. So once I got my car in place, I gave that a good squish and that is my card ready to go. You can see when I tilt it in the light, you get that beautiful shine. I hope you're feeling inspired to get creative with your inks and markers and dyes and whatever makes you happy. I hope you celebrate it all the way. Uh, make sure that you hit sub the subscribe button and so that you don't miss out on any of Scrapbook Pals future videos and make sure you're definitely checking out the blog and Instagram posts as well for more crafty inspiration. I hope that you guys have an amazing week and until next time, happy crafting.